Corinthians 20, 13. Look it up, right? Now, how are you going to be a Christian and not live by that? I saw this video recently and decided I would talk about it. I cannot believe this is acceptable in the Muslim community. If I was a Muslim and heard the Sheikh say this, embarrassed is an understatement. I'm going to review this video and show three things. I will show you the keep reading principle. This debunks claims from people attacking Christianity all the time. I will show you how this Sheikh discriminates against homosexuals and nothing more. And I'll show you how this actually backfires against him as a Muslim too. Let's listen to what he has to say first. Leviticus 2013. If a man lies with a man as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be surely put to death and their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 2013. Look it up, right? He reads one verse and then asks how Christians are going to live by that verse. This was part of a set of laws only for the Israelites. But I'll bring this up again later. Anytime you hear an argument based on one verse like this, just keep reading. It's only a matter of time before you see the argument is not that good. More of this also later in the video. But take Leviticus 20 for example. If you keep reading like smart people like you do, you will see something interesting. This passage covers all types of sexual behaviours. There are 17 different actions all punishable by death. All behaviours that endanger mankind's existence. This is why although not a sexual act, the second verse in the chapter is about sacrificing children. God says that's a capital crime, it's punishable by death. Verse 10 speaks of the adulterer, the married man or woman who cheat, they got the death penalty. A man who sleeps with his daughter-in-law, his father's wife or with an animal, all were capital crimes punishable by death. This is why continuing to read is always important because it provides context that people like the Sheikh leave out. The keep reading principle will keep you safe a lot. This leads to the next point which continuing to read presents. This is the problem with people like this that attack the Bible without reading it. He's discriminating against one type of person as if the Bible is doing this. The Bible doesn't pick on homosexuality no more than it does adultery or sleeping with animals. But by focusing on one type of sexual behavior God is against, it makes it seem that way. Imagine if the Sheikh made a video saying, Oh my goodness, Leviticus 20 says adulterers should die. This is in the Bible. How are you going to live with that? It's not a hot topic today, so it wouldn't get buzz. The better thing to do would be to highlight all 17 capital crimes and say, you have a problem with that. But I don't think he'd ever do that as a Muslim. He must read more, then stop discriminating and accept Christians are not under the Old Testament. Christians live under the New Testament. Before I highlight how this backfires, the Sheikh thinks he's got people like me right where he wants me. Listen to what he says next. This is the New Testament. Romans chapter one starts at 27. The, the men leaving their natural use for the woman burned with their lust for one another, men with men committing that which is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error that they have done, which is due, it's right here. In 32, those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do they do the same, also approve of those that practice them. According to Romans, and New Testament, those who approve, approve of them. Of should be put so those are the allies, yeah. There's those, a lot of dead people, bro. This, this is the Bible. On what planet does anything start at 27? At least he read more than one verse this time. All you must do is go back to verse 18, which says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. This is why you must keep reading regardless of the testament you are in. But it gets better. In Romans 1, 23 sins get listed. Homosexuality would be the 24th on the list. Again, by continuing to read, you are seeing how the Sheikh is discriminating against one sin, as if the Bible does this. Because the Bible mentions many sins, sins like sex before marriage, being proud and breaking promises. The irony is, Romans chapter 1 is the ultimate backfiring passage. It lists all these sins, and as you read, you start feeling like, yeah, people that commit these sins forsake God and have pleasure in sin are worthy of death. And then the Apostle Paul pulls the rug from under everyone's feet. In verse 1 of chapter 2 he says, You have no excuse if that's your judgment of these people. You deserve the same because you commit sins too. 
This is how Paul shows everybody needs to believe in Jesus. Everybody has sinned. Everybody needs the Savior. But for some reason, because the Sheikh did not read, he's acting like the Bible is against homosexuality and not other sins as well. The Bible is against all sins. And now, let's see how this all backfires against the Sheikh because he's going out of his way to act as if homosexuality is fine as a Muslim. If we look at the LGBTQXYZ agenda, we as Muslims cannot support this, not to make alliances, even if they don't support our causes, we don't need them. Islam forbids homosexuality. Islam's punishment include flogging, burning, and stoning. And someone exposing Islam is Christian Prince. He shares shocking things, Islam says, about homosexuality too in its sources. 